Good evening, I'm Mamie Yang, the director of the Henry Waldinger Memorial Library in Valley Stream. Welcome to the final concert in our series of 10 classical music recitals that took place in 2021, all on Zoom. They've been dedicated to the memory of Emily and Nathaniel Lehrman, presented by the library and featured soprano Helene Williams, pianist, composer Leonard Lehrman, co the co-founders of the Court Street Music here in Valley Stream, and violinist Daniel Heyman, who will be on shortly. Okay, the idea for these concert series were born uh, in conference with the Huntington Arts Council in a grant preparation workshop about two years ago. And as a result of the generous grant, it enabled us to have the concerts. These programs have been made possible with funds from the decentralization program, a re-grant program of the New York State Council of the Arts with the support of the Office of the Governor and the New York State Legislature administrated by the Huntington Arts Council. Support has also come from the Professor Edgar H. Lerman Memorial Foundation and from including Charles Samuel Brown, Juanita Smith, who is here today, Harry Sussman, who is also, Who's here. also here today, and Lenore Tyfer. Tiefer. Um, the Keeper. library is very Leonardo proud Keeper. that our first concert series um, took place uh, since classical music concerts over the past year have been rare at the libraries. We are pleased to be the official sponsor for the next series of concerts planned for 2022, which will start on January 11th. The 21 series featured the works of 59 composers and enjoyed the company of 27 guest performers, writers, interpreters, composers and their heirs, um, writing in from Bucharest and Israel and calling in from Paris, Rot Rot Rotterdam, uh, St. Petersburg, Russia, Hawaii, Texas, Michigan, Georgia, Saint, South Carolina, Maryland, Maine, and Melbourne, Australia. Unfortunately, the Arts Council panel did not fund the second series in 2022, but we are grateful that Joel Mandelbaum and his Maldeb Foundation has come forth with funding to make, make it possible to present seven of the originally planned 10 concerts next year. They will be monthly from January to June with one final concert in September. Um, I am putting an overview, the link to the overview of today's program in the chat. The links to all the programs are posted on Leonard's website and viewable on his YouTube channel, uh, which now has over a thousand subscribers and has had over a million views. And you can also watch the pre-recorded pre music of, of the program, and I'll be putting that in the chat. You can find the links to all the concerts, and again, I'll put that in the chat and the schedule for all the 2022 programs. Um, so your chat is gonna be very full. Uh, <laughs> this concert is devoted to the theme of winter and will feature music by uh, Barbara uh, Brahms, Handel, and this one is Kabalevsky, Vivaldi, and, and, and of course, Leonard Lehrman, as well as a special tribute to Stephen Sondheim who passed away on November 26th. And now to introduce the program is Dr. Leonard Lehrman. Thank you very much, Mamie Eng, for co-sponsoring us today, welcoming us, and for co-sponsoring all 10 of our house concerts this year, taking place monthly on Tuesdays at 5 o'clock. We, uh, my wife, Helena Williams, and I have now lived in Valley Stream for 22 years. Today's is our 671st concert together, our 11th Valley Stream Library performance, each of those with our dear friend and colleague, Dan Hyman, who's with us on the phone and will be showing up shortly, we hope. We're going to start our program appropriately enough with a new recording Helene and I just made of one of the great American arias, Must the Winter Come So Soon, appropriate for a concert on winter. And it's from the opera Vanessa by Samuel Barber on a libretto by Giancarlo Menotti. My conducting teacher, and Joe Mandelbaum's conducting teacher also, at Indiana, Tibor Cosma, once said that Minotti's greatest contribution to American opera was not setting his libretto for Vanessa to his own music, but letting his life partner Samuel Barber do so, which wasn't quite fair. Minotti wrote quite a few wonderful operas on his own and was a very nice man. I met and interviewed him in 1999, 
I never met Samuel Barber, but my friend Howard Pollack is writing his biography right now as we speak. This aria was written especially for the singer who premiered it in 1958, Rosalind Elias, who passed away last year at the age of 90. In her later years, she not only sang, but directed opera, and she was the director of the 1988 Lake George Arbor Workshop, which commissioned an opera from me. But more on that after we hear the, this aria. Must the Winter Come So Soon, from Vanessa, sung by Helene Williams. Must the winter come so soon? Night after night, I hear the hungry deer wander weeping in the rehearsing The Birthday of the Bank, an opera that John Baum and the Lake George Opera Festival had commissioned me to write based on a Chekhov play, Rosalind Elias suddenly realized that I had quoted her signature aria, which we just heard, in the middle of a mad scene toward the end of the opera. Why did you do that? She wanted to know. In homage to you, of course, I replied. So we're going to watch that scene now. Listen closely and watch the subtitles. The two singers you'll hear are Benjamin Spearman, who is now general director of Brock's Opera and happens to be Helene's son, and Ronald Edwards, who sang 12 different roles in nine of my 12 operas before leaving New York to return to his native Kansas. In this short scene, the spokesman for the stockholders of a bank is giving a speech written by the bank's director and then posing in a photograph with him. Unfortunately, just before his arrival, the director, his wife, a clerk, and an obstreperous customer have all gone mad screaming at each other and have literally fainted on the floor and the couch. And one of the, the, the director's wife is crying for water. The, the, the tune of Must the Winter Come So Soon literally floats over the director's hallucinatory ravings, as you'll hear. But do turn the volume up a little bit to be able to hear it, and you'll see it in the subtitles as well.
Now, that opera was set to music in Chekhov's original Russian. And my English translation was then written to go with the music. I'm very much hoping for a production in the original Russian in my lifetime, perhaps in St. Petersburg, where interest has been expressed. Um, I just want to introduce uh, a singer uh, that I've been working with this past week, uh, who can only stay for a short time and who has recorded Must the Winter Come So Soon, along with uh, many other things, some more music of mine and some beautiful music of Schumann and Foray. Perry Sussman, would you like to unmute and say hello? Can we, there we go. Hello. <laughs> Hi everyone. So uh, tell us in a, in a word or two uh, about this recording that you just made with me of, of Schumann and Foray, and it's, it's available to be watched now, right? Yes, it is. It will be available on demand until January 4. Uh, I can, I'm happy to put the link in the chat. I'll do that momentarily. Um, and it is with an organization called Sparrow Live, and it is a virtual concert that Leonard Lehrman and I made together. Um, Leonard on the piano and video by Helene Williams as well. And we hear, hear recorded, music. Yes. <laughs> and uh, we recorded Frauen Nebo und Daven by Schumann, and then we recorded a few melody songs by Fauré as well. So the whole program is maybe about a little over half an hour. And I will post the ticket event, so all the information will be in the link on how to reserve your spot if you're interested, and you can watch it anytime before January 4th at 11 p.m. And we're planning on March 1st to uh, put in, uh, to, to show a, a version of that Flaun Leben and Leben uh, Schumann recital, uh, Schumann uh, cycle uh, with subtitles, which I'll be providing in English and German before then. Um, it's March is, uh, is Women's History Month. And uh, even though the music wasn't written by a woman, it's about a woman's life and love. So we're going to include that on March 1st. And um, speaking of music written by women, um, if the, uh, if there is a piece that, that, could, that we could do for violin, viola, piano, soprano, or some combination thereof. Vanessa Lan, here's your invitation to send us something for that March first concert. If you can send it in time, we'd really appreciate it, okay? Well, that's fantastic. Thank you. It's wonderful. <laughs> well, you deserve that's it. That's fantastic. You've come to us all the way from Rotterdam twice now, and we'd love to no, have you again. No, I'm thrilled. To your music. I'm thrilled. Okay. Thank you. You're very welcome. Okay, so now into this uh, wintry mix. We now thought we'd bring a sonata for violin and keyboard by the German composer, Georg Friedrich Handel, known and loved in England as George Frederick Handel. And we've chosen number three of his six published sonatas for violin and piano, in which I'll be accompanying, not on the grand piano, but on the spinet, our violinist, Daniel Hyman. Uh, Dan, are you in a position to say a few words about the piece? I am. Good. So I'm paraphrasing by memory. Uh, this piece uh, dates from from the uh, 1730s. No, don't and do was, that. Uh, it was published in 1732, was, and it was long attributed as having been composed by Handel. The modern scholarship has cast doubt on the claim, calling it spurious. But of course, we like the piece very much anyway, regardless of who wrote it. Do you remember the, the titles of the movements, or shall I just give them? It follows the Baroque slow, fast, slow, fast plan. Right. Adagio, Allegro, Largo, and Allegro. And so now here is the Sonata number three in F major, HWV 370, attributed to George Friedrich Handel.
So uh, another very nice man I had the honor of corresponding with and meeting once, the brilliant composer and lyricist for himself and at least four other composers as well, Stephen Sondheim. Did more for the American musical than anyone else in the last 70 years. Satirist Tom Lehrer, his picture of him with me and Helene from 30 years ago in California. Tom Lehrer went to summer camp with Sondheim and described him in an interview as, quote, the greatest lyricist that the English language has ever produced. That is a fact, not an opinion, unquote. Now, I had the pleasure of conducting a Bronx community theater production of his masterpiece, Sweeney Todd, in 1988. And a few years before that, my father, Nathaniel S. Lehrman, in whose memory this concert series is dedicated, along with my mother, Emily R. Lehrman, composed a parody of the song about a character in the show named Pirelli. Dad was roasting a colleague named Petrelli on the, the occasion of his retirement and added a few barbs to Sondheim's. He wrote to Sondheim asking if he could have a copy of the music, which had not yet been published. Sondheim replied by sending him the piano score of the entire number and a note. Here is the music, Dr. Lehrman, with my compliments. And I do mean compliments. He remembered that correspondence when I introduced myself to him years later at an American Music Center party where he was getting an award. I told him that David Diamond had wanted me to become his student at Juilliard, but Milton Babbitt had blocked my enrollment saying, we think you'll have a wonderful career in the area of music. That's the specialty of a prized student of mine, Stephen Sondheim, but we're not admitting you to the doctoral pro composition program here. Oh, Milton can be so cruel, was Sondheim's compassionate response. He also responded compassionately, though critically, when I wrote him about his wonderful parody, which Lauren Bacall premiered, and Helene has performed a number of times, of the Ira Gershwin, Kurt Weill tune, The Saga of Jenny from the Lady, from Lady in the Dark, which Sondheim recast as The Saga of Lenny for Leonard Bernstein's 70th birthday. After Bernstein's death two years later, I wrote Sondheim suggesting an additional line. But he never gave up smoking, and so what can you do? Poor old Lenny kicked the bucket at 72. He wrote back asking me not to use that line, pleading with me not to use that line. So we, we've never performed the song with it, though of course I do mention it in conversation occasionally like this one. Uh, it seems particularly relevant now, I'm afraid, because Sondheim did give up smoking, which is how he lived to 91, passing away on November 26th. A Little Night Music was the first show of Sondheim's that I saw that convinced me of his musical as well as his lyrical genius. And of course, the most famous song from that show become his most famous and his most beloved and most covered song. Helene and I have done it many times. She first became aware of its beauty and power after seeing a production of the show her son Ben directed in Oswego, New York. Here she is singing it, also in upstate New York, at Kutcher's in the Catskills, shortly before it closed at the Lehrman family reunion on my parents' 67th wedding anniversary, June 18th, 2011.
going to say a couple of things about that uh, performance. You noticed that I was playing the synthesizer, even though there was a grand piano there. This was Kutcher's in the Catskills, which was falling apart and closed a few years later. Um, the piano was impossible to tune um, in many instances, so I was able to use it for some numbers, but others I had to play the synthesizer. One thing that, and everybody knows that song, but probably very few people know that, it's, that the title and the subject is actually an inside joke. Um, the word clown is often used as a slang term for a play doctor. When a play is in trouble and they call for the play doctors, that's when they send in the clowns. And that expression is a theater uh, uh, meme that uh, Sondheim capitalized in that song. Most people who know the song don't know that. I played that song along with Sondheim's Anyone Can Whistle without announcing either of them as the prelude at the Sunday morning service two days after Sondheim's death at Grace Episcopal Church in Massapequa, where I've just started as music director, composer in residence. And for the first time since I've been there, the music elicited applause. Uh, at least someone recognized it. I, I found out later who, who that was. It was actually Pat Adams. And I think she's here. Uh, Pat, uh, you want to say hello? You have to um, put, put on your, there you are. You have to unmute to hear you though. I think you have to give her permission. Do I have to do that? Let me see. No, no she's, she's fine. There you go. Hi. Okay. Yes, and it was marvelous. I, I have <laughs> never clapped in church. I've been going there for the last 45 years, but it was magnificent, Doctor. It was just magnificent. Like I said, it, it actually brought me to tears. It was oh, a that's beautiful. So, that's so sweet of you, Pat. We appreciate that. There, there were people in the church who, who questioned my playing non-church music, but uh, I think your enthusiasm uh, and, and, and uh, uh, encouragement has uh, overwhelmed the, those objections. And we really appreciate that. So um, this past Sunday, I don't know if you knew this, Pat, but I'm going to tell you now, as prelude and postlude, I played music by another composer friend, Mira J. Spector, who passed away November 28th. We just yes. learned last Friday, she was 93, two days mm -hmm. after Sondheim, two years older than him. She was with us on Zoom last March 2nd, and we'll remember her again on the March 1st concert that I mentioned earlier next year. Now, a piece uh, from 1946 that I grew up with in the 1960s, treasuring a Soviet recording of it by a Chinese pianist, who I learned later that the U.S. premiere of it in 1948 was actually played by Vladimir Horowitz, the good, it would be faster than I could play it, but I hope you'll tolerate my somewhat slower, more expressive tempo. It's the Piano Sonata Number no. 3 by Dmitry Kabalevsky, who was a friend and correspondent with my teacher, Eli Siegmeister, and uh, whom I think I met, but only very briefly at the International Music Congress in Moscow in 1971. Uh, it's a very organic piece. It's, it's, it's almost like Beethoven, you know, the, the Fifth Symphony is Beethoven based on four notes. Well, this piece is really based on four notes you'll hear those four notes in each movement and it holds it together. Uh, the piece is in three movements, Allegro con moto, Andante cantabile, and Allegro giocoso.
So, uh, returning to our theme of winter, I'll return to the spinet to accompany Dan Hyman in the winter movement of the set of violin concerti Antonio Vivaldi called I Quattro Stagioni, or the Four Seasons, composed in 1723. Dan has come back from teaching. He's here live. Would you like to say something about the, the music of Vivaldi? Sure, a minute. Thanks. Uh, the work is illuminated by a series of Petrarchan sonnets in Italian, probably written by the composer himself. Our score quotes portions of them in English to describe what the music is depicting, such as the snow, the ice, the wind, raindrops, and chattering teeth. <laughs> right. Now, I, I put those texts uh, in as subtitles, so you can follow them, as we now play the Winter Concerto from the Four Seasons in three movements, Allegro, Non Molto, Largo, and Allegro.
winter from the four seasons of Vivaldi. There are many wonderful Russian poems and songs about winter, though none so dear to me personally as the one you're about to hear. When my first marriage broke up in November 1985, I was living in Berlin, and my mother in New York sent me this comforting Pushkin poem together with a photograph of a winter scene. I just found this. I don't know if you can see, I think you can see that, yeah. She sent me this photograph along with this poem in Russian saying, look how beautiful everything is outside. And it did make me feel better. A little over a year later, I met the woman, Helene, who would record the song with orchestra in Russia in June of 2016. This is the album that Ravello put out. So we're going to hear her singing it in Russian with me at the piano in a concert in memory of my mother, November 12th, 2018, at Center Makor in Brookline, outside of Boston. The subtitles are bilingual, my singing English translation and the original Russian when she sings. So our final major work completing our concert in this year's recital series is the third of Johannes Brahms' three violin piano sonatas. When we started this series, Dan and I promised ourselves we would do all three of those pieces, and so we have. This one has particular resonance for me as I toured New York, Massachusetts, and New Hampshire in a program that featured it with my dear violinist friend, Janet Packer in 1973. Her recording of my violin sonata, which I wrote for her, is still the definitive one, though Dan and I are planning to make another one for next June's concert. So Dan, would you like to say something about the Brahms? Sure, this is uh, a favorite piece of mine to hear and to read as well. This is the very first time I've prepared it for performance. 
I especially love the way Clara Schumann <laughs> described the image provoked in her mind by the Adagio third movement. Like no, it's not Adagio. That's the uh, 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 ah, poco presto, poco presto. Ah, that makes more sense. Yeah, it's not the Adagio. That's <laughs> okay. the second movement. It's the third movement. You it, uh, so uh, she she wrote um, it's like a beautiful girl sweetly frolicking with her lover, and suddenly in the middle of it all, a flash of deep passion, only to make way for sweet dalliance once more. The four movements are marked. Allegro, adagio, un poco presto e con sentimento, and presto agitato. And now here is Brahms's violin piano sonata number no. three in D minor, opus 108. <laughs>
now to say goodbye to 2021, thinking about the coming Christmas season. We'll end with a piece that I wrote for a composer's concordance Christmas party of 2002. I remember Victoria Bond, composer conductor, sent out an invitation announcing that there would be 12 tone Christmas carols. Are you serious? I asked her. No, of course not, she replied. No one could write a 12 tone Christmas carol. You want to bet? was my response. And here was the result, a melody that uses all 12 notes only once before returning in inversion, retrograde, and retrograde inversion. I think Arnold Sherbert would have loved it, and maybe even Milton Babbitt, too, if he would have listened. Helene and I sang, and then a group of naturists in the piece in upstate New York, August 3rd, 2017. Some of them weren't wearing anything, but don't worry, the camera doesn't show any of that. It's good for you, like cereal, hence a cereal, 12 tone Christmas carol. Sing along if you like, only please stay muted. Christmas comes like once a year, which glow we cannot shell. Though we may try, and yet his days still number. for coming. We hope you enjoyed hearing the music as much as we enjoyed performing it for you. We'll be happy to let each of you speak who'd like to just indicate and we'll unmute you. But first, a word about the themes and contents of our next concerts. We'll start again in 2022 on July, on, excuse me, on January 11th, celebrating the 225th birthday that month of Franz Schubert. It's born January 31st, 1790, excuse me, yeah, 1797. February 1st, we'll celebrate Black History Month, and we hope to premiere a piece we commissioned last year from Kevin Scott, and my own setting of Amanda Gorman's inaugural poem, The Hill We Climb, will be sung by Patrice Eaton. March 1st begins Women's History Month, April 5th, Jewish Music Month, May 3rd will be devoted to Maying, June 14th to students and teachers, and September 13th we'll celebrate the birthdays of, Helene, of the birthdays of Helene's mother, Ethel Gross Williams, Raymond, and Anthony Dvorak. Now, who would like to speak? We could un, oh, I'm going to ask all to unmute. I think we can do that. And, um, oh, Jordan, you oh, have I, your hand up. Yes, I let it. I enjoyed it very much. Oh, great. How much did you get to hear in your car? And how much? Uh, in oh, your, yeah, uh, about 45 minutes of car ride, and, and then the rest I was able to enjoy at home watching well, that's cool <laughs> well tell everybody at the library about it and um uh, okay, well, it would be nice sure if they, they put it in their calendar you know we <laughs> we, we, did, we did the first concert that we did together with the um valley stream library was a collaboration with the oyster bay library that was for beethoven's birthday in december of 2019 and um we've done 10 concerts now this year with just this library and we would love to have collaboration with other libraries including our library so you know I can't just speak for myself. You you speak for us too, Jordan. Okay. Well, you Great to have you. We really appreciate it. Well, um, so Kevin Scott is here. We mentioned him earlier, and Good. Kayla Lattenheim is here from from Maine. Kayla, do you want to uh, unmute yourself? Have a good night. Happy New Year. Uh, maybe Eng is writing. Yes. Kayla, hi. Where you? It looks like you're in the woods, or that's just an artificial background, right? It's yeah. It's just a picture for where I go. Yeah. The, the woods are all bare now. That you, you've been sending out, out beautiful pictures of your place in Maine on, on Facebook. We all admire them. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was, I was doing candles. I was doing a picture for each candle. Oh, oh. that's nice. Oh, for Hanukkah. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. That's what that series was. I was taking a picture, of, I a get picture it. an extra picture of light each night. Very nice. 
Kevin, are you, are you, are you able to say, give, uh, give me, I'll be back in a minute. Give me a second. Hold on. <laughs> right. Well, we're not going to be on much longer than a minute. Um, is, uh, is there anybody else here who would, uh, Tova, I, I, uh, I, I muted didn't, or, and I stopped your video before, but you're invited to, to say hello if you're there. There you are. Hello. I'm able to start video, but we're here. We had a wonderful, just a wonderful concert. Oh my gosh. Oh, we just thank you. Last every time, minute of it. Last time we spoke to you, you were looking for a tech director. Did you find one? We found two techies and please God, one of them will work out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Your math guy's here. I hope, I hope you keep us informed. You um, bet. Okay. Um, Kevin, are you back with us? Yes, I am. Can you guys see me? Yes, yeah. we can. Okay, great. No problem. Yeah, uh, great concert this evening. Thank you. And um, thank you. I'm looking. Uh, hopefully, we will get the night journey on the road for February. Yeah, let's hope so. Dan and I have been working on it, but we still need a horn player uh, that we don't have yet. We thought we did, horn. but we don't. Horn so. player, or, or if not, we get a cellist. You know, uh, uh, but we'll find somebody. I have. Uh, I'm I confident so. of it. And we'll send night journey on its way to to light. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Right. <laughs> thank you, Helene. Thank you. All right. So, is there, is there any, is anybody else still there who would like to say hello? Um, who hasn't already? Tova, we have heard from. Amy, we heard from the beginning. Uh, Pat, we also heard from. Um, Mark, Mark Wasserstrom is a spectator. I don't think he usually says hello, but he comes in from Kansas City to every concert, which is nice. He's mm. Kayla. He's one of our classmates. You, did you, you know him? No, I, oh, I know him at Harvard. Uh, <laughs> gotten to know him uh, more since the reunions actually um so uh, that's what reunions are for yeah yeah well we, we, we're looking forward to that uh, in um, in june and then on, actually on december 11th the the class is going to have a musicale and i wrote a piece for that 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 uh, uh helene is singing into a text by another classmate of ours jane sass right. you remember jane sass collins yeah okay. uh vanessa vanessa raised her hand our food is here. Oh, good. Yeah, I'll yeah. go get it. <laughs> this one, this oh, yeah. one. Thank you so much. You're going to get it, Leonard. You're still here. Uh, That's wonderful. You, you uh, must be very uh, late there, though. No, that was wonderful. That was a lot of fun and uh, fantastic playing pieces. So and, can, can, uh, can you really send nice. us a piece? Do you have something in mind? Sure. For a women's history, I <laughs> we can make some history. <laughs> yeah. No. no do, you, do, you, do you have a piece that's already written or, or the one that you think you might like to write? Well, I have a piece for uh, voice and piano. Maybe we could uh, okay. work on that. Uh, for voice and piano? No, voice and piano. Oh. <laughs> for voice and piano. What's the text? Um, James Joyce, uh, My Dove, My Beautiful One. Um, it's oh, great. Uh, from Chamber Music, 1908. And, yes, uh, yes, we've done, we've done some Joyce settings uh, by Michael Shapiro, who was a student of Ellie Singmeister. And <laughs> Stephen Albert, who was also a student of Stephen, the one I feel it surprised just before he was killed in the car accident. Um, mm. But uh, so we, 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 and David Deltretti was a teacher at Harvard, um, also wrote some beautiful uh, Joyce settings. So um, that should be lovely. Yeah, oh, that, yeah. send it Thank as soon you. as you can. We, we'll, we'll need some time to work on that. Well, yeah. thanks for asking. Yeah, it's about three and a half minutes, and I'd love to be. Uh, that sounds it like it's perfect. <laughs> yeah. mm. Wonderful. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. Wait, so, wait, wait. Uh, and what's the, what's the, what's the title of it? My dove, my beautiful one. So my dove, my beautiful one. That sounds yeah. perfect. Fantastic. Anyway, thanks for asking, and thanks for this concert. And um, I'm going to wave off from Rotterdam. And uh, okay, for the lovely, uh, ending of Happy the year. New Year. <laughs> Merry you Christmas, too. Happy New Year. And uh, we'll, we'll we'll look forward to getting that music and uh, we'll be in touch. Wonderful. And um, thank you. Let me see. Is there is there anybody else here who? Uh, we want to say, uh, let's see, uh, Rhoda, Rhoda, we can hear you, but we can't see you. You want to say hello? Who that? Rhoda? Who can't we see? No, I'm, gonna, I'm asking all to unmute. Um, Who that? Rhoda, Rhoda is unmuted. Pat is unmuted. But I think people have, have, have started to leave. Well, it's, I it's, think almost, so. it's 10 to 7. Um, okay, this is actually one of the shorter concerts that we did. Most of our concerts have lasted close to two hours. Well, everybody go this. eat. Yeah, okay. okay. Yeah, our we'll food is to run. Okay, <laughs> so Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and um, I hope we'll see most of you back on uh, January 11th. And okay. um, uh, uh, Mark and, and uh, Kayla, I hope we'll see you on uh, December 11th. Okay.
Okay. Goodbye. Thank you for coming in. Bye bye. 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 Christmas comes out once a year. It's good. We cannot tell. If we may try. Try. Try again. Should I leave? Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Bye.